we have a question. Oh, oh this is straight up your arrow. Thank you for mentioning war crimes mm. about the current conflict. How do you feel that the media in the U.S. is in any way biased? Speaking of difficult questions. <laughs> Sure, of course it is at times, you know, it depends on who on who you're you're listening to or reading. I mean, bias happens. Um, it certainly exists. I, what I try to what I try to get, you know, I get asked a lot about people like who can we trust? You know, uh, you know, uh, w- w- what's fake news? Um, and I usually try to use instead of bias and and because biases exist, you know, every human being has a bias. Every newspaper has something of a bias. It's not a conspiracy. It's not like they're deliberately making stuff up to try to manipulate you. Uh, it's just uh, viewpoints that that different different people come from. I think that what matters most is um, quality of reporting, you know, verifying facts, and the experience of the journalists. So, you know, I could I could what read the wall street journal today i could read the ft which i did i picked up a copy of the ft today i could read the the new york times they all might give pretty different perspectives on what's going on in israel uh, and gaza right now it doesn't mean that it's not quality reporting it it does mean that you know there there is on you know for better or for worse and usually it's worse there's a spectrum of coverage what matters most is quality and whether or not any of these people have experience there know what they're talking about and have verified the reporting um and these may seem like very basic things but they're not to be taken for granted at all um no, I mean- yeah and so so you know i mean you could be reading a, a very you know pretty biased outlet like you know i don't know the hill or, or you know, a fairly like right wing or very very conservative outlook. It could still be well written. Someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who has verified their sources. And likewise, you know, in a more, much more left wing outlook uh, or outlet. But um, but yeah, bias can still can still exist, which is why we should probably try to get more of a spectrum of news. We should never just go to one source. And but, but particularly about war crimes, I think. Um... I don't know if I'm not going to, I'm not extra, I'm not sure what um, this, uh, whether bias, this was part of the bias, but mm-hmm. what strikes me is um, the paucity of including war crimes in coverage. That's, yeah. it, that is, um, that, that's not, it, it's as if it's, we, what are you going to put in your news? What mm-hmm. are you looking for? And war crimes are very specific. There are laws, there are rules. And, it's like covering a trial without talking about what and the matter. Are. We we must talk about war crimes. You know, like when it came to covering Yemen, we can't take for granted that the readers and viewers understand that exactly. it is illegal to to starve a population into submission. So as a civilian population, you know, we can't take that for granted that they don't know that it is illegal to you know bomb a house full of civilians just because there is one militant in that house like most people don't know that and i and i and i also you know i get i get a little bit uh, of a broken record i'm a bit of a broken record about 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 war crimes because it frustrates me because when you're like one of the only people talking about them and of course they're being discussed more broadly now with gaza but but if you're talking about them in in you know where it's less in vogue like afghanistan and yemen I get frustrated because I, I think people misunderstand the idea of war crimes as though they were very modern, very new, very hippy dippy. When they're actually written by, you know, officers of the of 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 armies that returned from from the first and second world war, horrified by what they had seen and in many cases what had been done to them or had they had done, and they were like, we need we need rules, and so. I think it's really important that we that we uh, that that the that the the public understand that revenge, retribution, collective punishment, these things are 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 illegal because at one stage, you know, humanity stood up and said, this is this is absolutely abhorrent to us and and we must have some standards uh, as as the human race. And it makes a difference perhaps, and have you run across this as a journalist, that the United States did not sign the, does that make it, have you seen that as a journalist? As a journalist, I think it, it's, it, it matters in terms of repercussions, right? So the United States is not a, a signature to the Rome statutes. Right. So this was very interesting. There was a very interesting um, uh, 
case whereby, of course, there any any if if anybody wanted to bring war crimes to the ICC to the Hague from Afghanistan, for instance, the United States was not subject to to the uh, the, the ICC. However, sometimes you know there, there's an argument to be had that that basically the this that the those laws um, that that uh, Afghanistan was. So if the crimes committed in a country that is, then technically the, the government there could have cooperated, which would have been extremely difficult, you know, under the Ashraf Afghani government, if they had agreed to cooperate, you know, with the ICC would have been, you know, particularly difficult for the United States. Now, of course, you know, you could argue that that government can't exist without U.S. support. So, so yeah, I mean, the Uni United States is, is not a signature. However, I would say that that doesn't mean that, you know, if we're reporting on U.S. foreign policy or the the conduct of the US military that doesn't mean i can't report that you know this is a crime you know extrajudicial killing would be a crime if if we had evidence of that 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 had happened um you know indiscriminate uh, shelling or indiscriminate airstrikes things like this like we we could still and i think it's important that we still use this language in our reporting because it's important for our 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 for the public to understand um and, and and more so, I think this has been part of the conversation about war crimes with regards to Israel and Gaza. There's a difficulty yes. here because it's there's a lot of conversations about moral equivalency, you know. Um, and I do think it's important to remember that that you know everybody should be subject to the same stand to the same standards. And and yes, terror groups by their very nature conduct atrocities that are terrible crimes that are you know crimes against humanity that can be you know they, they, they are war crimes but but of course this has been the big conversation it doesn't mean that the conduct of armies of nations are in any way um then justified you know it doesn't mean they're they're not subject to the laws of war and they all militaries do recognize rules of war, whether they have the statute or not. We have one more question sure. and we have a, exactly time for one more question. A little more on who imposed the press prohibition in Gaza and why? Well, the press prohibition is really about the anybody prohibition. Gaza is under siege and has been effectively on and off basically since 2007, mm -hmm. since Hamas took control. And so during peace times, if I went to Israel and I wanted to go to Gaza, I would have to go to the uh, Israeli authorities and ask permission and show my accreditation, apply, spend some time, get permission. It's special permission to enter. You know, Gazans are not allowed out of Gaza um, unless they get very, very special permission. And it's very, very difficult for them to get it. So journalists have always needed special permission to go in, but all the borders are now closed. So journalists can't get in, doctors, anybody, they can't get in. Um, and so no one is entering Gaza. It is a completely sealed strip of land. No one in, no one out, including journalists. And siege is not allowed under the rules of law. Siege is not. And the, the Israelis would argue, well, you know, people can flee from that building to that building. This is where you get into like the legal conversations. Like, is it, you know, do people really have a means to escape if they can only like squash up against a, a two million people are trying to squash up against a southern boundary where they will have no water, they will have no food, they will definitely have no medicine. So, you know, it, it is true, like sieges on civilian populations are not permitted in um in 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 the laws of war